Hello everybody, today we are talking about how to analyze histograms. So this is step four in the data cycle process. So we formulated our questions, we have used those questions to collect and acquire data, we have made our data look pretty using a histogram, and now we get to look at what is that data telling us. So just a few reminders about histograms. Remember that we have our intervals across the bottom and that the height of that bar is telling us the frequency or how many points are in that interval. So for example here, I've got this histogram is talking about points scored by each player on the boys basketball team. The bottom is the number of points scored and then the frequency is over here. So this means that there were three players that scored zero to four points. There were seven players that scored five to nine points, so on and so forth. So that's how we're gonna read those histograms. Some important things to note is that a histogram does not show those individual data points. So I can't tell how many players scored exactly three points. I can't tell how many players scored 15 points, right? I don't know that maximum, minimum, average, any of those um, measures of center. Because we don't have all the information, we just have how many are in that individual interval. Another thing to pay attention to is that you can manipulate the way that data looks Especially in a histogram, they can manipulate it by changing those intervals. So if instead of these four intervals that we had, if we only broke it down to two, it wouldn't really show us the full picture of what's going on. So it's going to manipulate the way that we see the data. Also, if we have really small intervals, sometimes there's too many of them and we can't see the overall pattern um, of the data that we're looking at. So we want to make sure that we're using the correct size intervals to make sure the data actually is making sense. Okay, let's practice actually answering some questions based off this histogram that we've seen up here. So the first question we're asking is how many total players are on the team? Anytime they're asking for a total, we're just gonna be adding up all the frequencies to get that total number of players overall. So we've got three, seven, four, and two, and when we add that all together, we get 16 total players. Okay. Number two, how many players scored at least 15 points? So at least is 15 or greater. And the only interval that fits into that 15 or greater is this last one. So we know that there were two players that scored at least 15 points. Number three is asking what's the least frequent interval. So remember frequency is how tall those bars are. So we're looking for the shortest one overall. And the shortest one is that same one we were just looking at, 15 to 19. All right, our last question for this histogram is what percent of the players scored less than 10 points? So if I wanna do less than 10, I'm gonna combine these two intervals together, right? Because all of these are something less than 10. So I've got seven and three gives me 10 players that scored less than 10 points. But they're not asking how many players, they're asking for the percent. So I'm gonna take that 10 out of 16. So I'm gonna turn it into that fraction and I'm gonna plug that in my calculator and I'm gonna wind up with about 63%. So there were 63% of the players scored that less than 10 points. Okay, let's look at some other kind of questions that they can ask us. So another question they'll ask is what kind of information can we get from a histogram? So in this one, they wanna know which of the following questions can be answered using a histogram. The first one, what's the average test score? That's looking for one of those measures of center. So we need all the individual ones to add them together and divide. So we cannot find that using a histogram. Num letter B <laughs> is what is the most common test score? So again, we don't have each of the individual test scores when we're looking at a histogram, so we can't answer that question. How many students took the math test? That we can do, right? Because we would add up all those frequency bars like we just did before. So that is a question we can answer using a histogram. And then what percent of students earned exactly an 80%, right? We don't have those individual data points. So again, not something that we can answer. Okay, let's look at another example of a histogram and practice answering some of those questions. So let's see here. We've got shoes owned by seventh grade students. So our frequency or our number of students is over here and the pairs of shoes owned is down below. So that means that four students own zero to three pairs of shoes six students own four to seven so on and so forth all right number one how many students own between eight to fifteen pairs of shoes so if i'm looking from eight to fifteen i'm going to combine those two um, intervals together so i've got one from the first one and i've got three from the second one so that is four students that fit that eight to fifteen category 
Okay, here's another percent one. So what percent of students own between four to 11 pairs of shoes? So I'm, now I'm looking at these middle two. So I've got six and one. But again, they don't wanna know just seven students. They wanna know what percent that is. So I need to find my total. So let's go back. We've got four, six, one, and three. So this is 14 total. And seven out of 14 is going to give us 50% of students own between four to 11 pairs of shoes. All right, number three, how many students own five pairs of shoes? Well, I know that five pairs of shoes is gonna be in this four to seven category, right? So note there are six students that could own five pairs of shoes, but we don't know how many pairs of shoes they actually own, right? They could all own four, they could all own seven, they could be a whole mixture in between. So this is not a question that we can answer from a histogram. I know that feels kind of wrong to put that on a <laughs> test, right, where you can say we don't know, but that's an actual question that they might ask and an actual answer you might give is that we just don't have the right information to answer that question. Okay, the last little bit is we're going to talk about manipulating those intervals. So number four says suppose we change the intervals from the histogram above to 0 to 7 and 8 to 15. How would that change the impact of the graph representation? So let's look at that. If we changed it just from zero to seven, that means that these two would be combined, right? So we would have 10, um, the bar would be 10 tall, right, for the frequency from zero to seven. And then for our eight to 15, it would be four. So let's look at those answer choices. We have the number of bins would change from four to three. Well, nope, there would only be two bins, right? There would be two intervals there, so that's not correct. The interval from zero to seven would have 10 students. Yep, we just talked about that. The number of students in each bin would stay the same. Nope, it's changing because we're shrinking that number of intervals. And the new interval eight to 15 would have two students. We know that is not correct either. It would have that four. All right, last question for this video. Which histogram would be a better representation of the data? So this original histogram that we have up here or that new one with just those two bins. So pause the video here, see what you think. All right, and hopefully we said that the original histogram is a better representation, right? So when we're looking at that original histogram, we have a better idea of all those different categories. When we shrink it down to just two bins, we can't really see the overall pattern that's going on in the data. All right, so hopefully you feel more comfortable with how to answer questions based on a histogram. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you next time.